Today's date is 1600 CE, the formation of the East India Company. In 1577, Sir Francis Drake set out to plunder Spanish and Portuguese colonies. Along the way, he met Sultan Babula, and when he returned to England, he provided goods that were a 500% return on the original investment. This turned British interests to the East Indies. After the defeat of the Spanish Armada, Britain was in a very powerful position. London merchants petitioned Queen Elizabeth to allow them to sail to the Indian Ocean, with the aim of destroying the monopoly the Spanish and Portuguese held on the region. James Lancaster was one of the first to successfully lay down routes for the Levant Company, travelling between 1591 and 94. Other successful ventures led to merchants like Stephen Soane, the Lord Mayor at the time, Thomas Smythe and Richard Hacklett, desiring to continue taking advantage of the situation. They formed a company and raised the equivalent of nine million in today's money. The Queen approved a charter which gave the investors a 15-year monopoly on the region. Thomas Smythe was named the first governor, along with 24 directors. James Lancaster commanded the Red Dragon for the first voyage, which robbed a Portuguese ship and sent the booty back home. Their first foothold in India was in 1608, when ships started docking there and the first factory was completed in 1630. Profits soared for the company and they started acquiring many soldiers, reaching 300,000 at one point, which was twice the size of the British army. Their own private army allowed them to conquer the Indian subcontinent. In 1757, after the Battle of Palassi, the company virtually ruled India. The company is partially responsible for reversing the global balance of trade. Now it would go from east to west. It accounted for half the world's trade in the mid-1700s and was the largest company at the time. Often forgotten is that the fact that the British slave trade isn't just across the Atlantic, the transatlantic slave trade. It also moved into India. To provide for their Indian empire, the company would take many slaves from West and East Africa in order to provide the necessary skills and labour that it needed to continue making profit. After the Indian Revolution and some financial difficulties, the company was dissolved in 1874 and the British Raj assumed control of its armies and activities. To remember this date, let's imagine an East India Company flag floating in the middle of the sea. A ship heads from Britain and off to India, and as it goes, it smashes its way through the flag, leaving behind the first number of the date. The ship collects some gold, then travels back to Britain, smashing the flag again, revealing another number. Then, because it was so successful the first time, more ships come and smash through the flag once again, get gold, and on their return journey, smash once more through the flag, revealing the whole date. 1600 CE, the founding of the East India Trading Company. Thanks for watching.